love in action is a concept of a goodwill movement of humanity. We live at the end of an age, the end of his story, his story. Her story, matriarchy, ended a long time ago. And now a new story is beginning, which is our story. It's the story of the child. And it's not the children, but it's the child within everybody. This is the new age that is beginning now. What will we write in the records of time? Will we be part of this evolution? Or will we stay apart? Will we trust life? It's up to us. We are the ones that we were waiting for, and now it's time for action. The information in this talk does not in any way claim to be the only truth. It is only a path along with so many leading to the same thing, love. There's many, many, many organizations and groups working right now on our planet for the same thing. And unlike how it's done in business that is competitive and everybody's fighting everybody, in this new way of being, in these organizations and group of people that work for love, we are already all united because we're working for the same thing. It doesn't matter if we're having different names, if this is called love in action, or the other one is called humanity healing, or the other one is called children of the sun. We all know that we are one. We're going to the same thing, to our evolution as a species. Each and every one of us is a unique and capable creator of their own truth that leads them home, leads them home. Please allow this information to just pass. You don't have to believe anything. Let it be a seed for your own research. Love in action is a concept. It might and it might not resonate with your current understanding. You need not judge what you hear because judgment is not love. And love is our topic here and now today. Love in action is exactly what it states to be. Love actively performing or expressing itself in here and out there. So let's begin to define love. Love is a feeling, an emotion, a dimension. Actually, it's supposedly the fifth dimension. We live, we are locked actually in the third dimension. And we're passing now very quickly from the fourth, opening our brain, opening our being, to the fifth, which is love. A frequency, like when we tune into a radio station, from the open loving heart. Rolin McCarthy, from the director of the, Reacher, of the research center of the Institute of the Heart Math, says about the heart, because love is from the open heart. The heart is a sensory organ and acts as a sophisticated information encoding and processing center that enables it to learn, remember, and make independent functional decisions. It generates the largest electromagnetic field in the body. This is the electromagnetic field of our heart. It is the, strong, it is the strongest and biggest field from the human body. Peter Boris, the author of Awakening to the Heart-Centered Divine Consciousness says, it is also, sorry, I'm saying this, it is also the seat of the soul inside the body, and he's saying, our organizing center for experiencing divine consciousness, which emanates at higher frequencies than the physical body vehicle, the all-in-one, infinite, non-local and dimensionless, loving intelligence of perfect, restful, creative action. The heart consciousness is our experiencing point of expressing the divine in the body. This is the analogy of sacred geometry 
of the heart. In other words, the, our heart is the gate to love as a unified field of energy that we can connect to, through, and which we are unified as one with each other and all of creation. The heart is the first organ to be created in the womb and it immediately starts to beat unconditionally to the rhythm of life. It just beats. It doesn't ask if it's worth it. It just beats. It just beats. It's the last to stop beating. It doesn't ask. It's not logical. It just beats. The heart? In the heart domain, there is no judgment, no limitation, and no condition. Just beating to the rhythm of life. Dancing. Love doesn't make any logical sense most of the time. It involves that presence inside that connects us to the life force that created us and created and is still creating and still creating in every single now through us and through all of creation in a never-ending spiral of life. Love is the opposite of fear, the space that binds everything together or the glue that binds everything together. Love is without condition, without limitation, and without need. Love is that which is free. It is synonymous with life, God, unlimited, eternal, and free. We all know love as children. We are still natural. Love is natural. Natural is made by nature. Then, as we enter human society, we become normal. Normal is what is commonly accepted as ordinary behavior. Normal is not necessarily natural. In our modern societies, pretending, for instance, <coughs> pre-attending, as opposed to being fully present in the now, feeling, fearing each other, and the world around us, or being guided by guilt or fear, is very normal. And so, from an early age, we begin to lose the natural state of unconditional love towards life, and we tend to forget that we are here to forgive. Suspicion replaces trust, Logical thinking replaces intuitive knowledge, and melancholy takes the place of the inherent joy we all experienced as children. We like to be serious and self-conscious, and forget to be light and soul-conscious. The child within us, however, never forgets. Even as we cover it with these veils of normal and serious, it patiently waits our return home. The home of this child inside us is our heart, and we all have a heart. Our inner child is not our identity of the child that we used to be, but rather it is our eternal nature that never grows old, our youthful, fully vibrant and playful soul waiting our, 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 our awakening from the illusion of matter. matter is trapped light. We only have to remember, remember, become a member once again of the body of life, love, nature, God. Having mentioned God is only necessary to clarify what I am referring to when mentioning a word that has been the cause of many, war many wars in this world. And so, all that is, Divine, ultimate source of life, prime creator, source, great central sun, goddess, god, all that is, I am presence, etc., etc. Every person or group of people is entitled to their own name, connection, and understanding of the divine inside them that created them, inside them, created them and their connection to this source. Every person is a drop in the ocean 
and of the ocean in a drop. For love in action, we live and let live. We focus on what unites rather than on what separates. Kindergarten is us living in a state of separation from each other and from the world around us. Separation involves a primitive state of existence from a time space soon to be referred to as the dark ages of humanity, when humans were still locked in a limited understanding and intelligence. The times are changing and our understanding is broadening beyond any record. Many enlightened masters walked the earth alone over the centuries and the eons. But such a collective awakening and evol evolutionary leap as the one that is happening now on our planet has never ever been recorded before. There is sublime wisdom, science, sacred geometry, and maths in the creation and functioning of the multiverse. Everything is interconnected in a way far beyond the grasp of the human logical mind. I have to make a note on the human logical mind and where the mind is an amazing, amazing organ and also our mind when it's functioning properly can really take us there. But our mind right now is functioning in a non-harmonious way because we mostly use our logical mind. The other part that is the creative mind tries to communicate to us in our dreams, but they're not functioning in a harmonious way. So let's talk a bit about the mind that we're using as societies, modern societies in our cultures uh, to understand the problem with the mind. The philosophy teacher in class made a small circle on the board and she told us to suppose that the small circle is our knowledge. <coughs> she said that the rest of the blackboard was our all knowledge. Our knowledge was the cycle, all knowledge was the blackboard. And she asked us, which is our ignorance? And so all of us said that all the blackboard is our ignorance. But it was the wrong answer, because she said we could not know anything out outside of our knowledge. Our ignorance was also the cycle. We couldn't know anything outside of that. That is the logical mind. It, it's limited. And that's the mind that we commonly accept as normal to use in our societies. And that's why it's a good idea now to go with the organ that is the safest to take us there. And that's why we're talking about the heart. Already many people are harmonizing their brain to take them, but now the subject is from the heart. The good news is that we were given a present to help us know the whole picture beyond the rational mind. We will come back to it in a while. We will talk a little bit about perspective because we have a tendency here in this world to, to think that we are everything and that we're this very, very, very super important thing. As above, so below means and refers to the interconnectedness of the macrocosm with the microcosm. The movement of the planets around the sun in a solar system that the naked eye cannot see because it's such a big picture is actually resembling the movement of the electrons around the core of a cell inside our body that the naked eye cannot see because it's so small. And it's the same thing, the macrocosm and the microcosm, the above and the below. Also, perspective. This is our great sun. These are the planets, our Earth. And then, in a different scale, that is our sun. These are other suns. And in a different scale, our big solar system is somewhere in that neighborhood. On human beings now. Human 
is a 3D solid form and being is the energetic entity, the energetic entity that is timeless and exists with or without a physical body. The human body has many systems, such as the skeletal body, the cardiovascular system, the muscular system, the energy system. The energy system inside the body has seven centers called chakras, each radiating energy responsible for certain functions. These centers begin at the base of the spine and move upwards to the top of the head. And these are the centers inside the human body. And so, the red is connected to earth and survival. Orange is connected to water and creativity. Yellow is connected to fire and energy. Green is connected to air and love. Turquoise is connected to sound and communication. Indigo is connected to light and vision. Purple is connected to information and intuition. The heart love center is right in the middle of the lower and the higher energy centers, connecting in this way the above and the below, the higher with the lower, the macrocosm and the microcosm. The heart center is the middle of it all. From there, we can really connect. Humans have also been called the rainbow race because the appearance of their energetic bodies look like the rainbow. Iris, the ancient rainbow goddess, is the one delivering messages from the higher realms to Earth. The humans, supposedly, are the ones exactly to connect the dimensions of the higher planes on the Earth. Love in action is a concept of, the, of a goodwill movement of humanity towards the next stage of human evolution. So we talk a little bit, what is the next stage of this human evolution? The next stage is called unity consciousness. Our scientists explain that the next stage of human evolution will not be some change in our physical bodies because our physical bodies are very evolved already but it will be a shift in our consciousness. It will involve the ending of separation and the beginning of unity. The realization and understanding that we are all one. In the spiritual world, it is the era in which each individual will remember and reunite to the divine presence within them, which is interconnected to, to the, the divine, divine presence in everyone else and the divine presence of all life. This event has been predicted and expected to happen by many traditions, cultures, religions, and schools of thought. In, In the, the world, world of science, science, the realization of unity consciousness is taking place now within the quantum physics field. And for the first time, science is saying that it discovered God. Evolutionist Bruce Lipton is saying in his book, The Biology of Belief, that you may consider yourself an individual, but as a cell biologist, I can tell, you are in truth a cooperative community of approximately 50 trillion single-celled citizens. Almost all of the cells that make up your body are amoeba-like individual organisms that have evolved a cooperative strategy for their mutual survival. He goes on to explain that in the same way each person in the world is an individual cell in the body of humanity, in the microcosmic and the macrocosmic. <coughs> Both science and spirituality agree that from a wider perspective, we are all one. And it's the first time that science and spirituality are coming to the same thing, agreeing on something. And they are agreeing on the next stage of our evolution. When me, small self ego, becomes we, sacred, big self, a whole new reality will dawn upon our pl planet. Spiritually, it is referred to as the golden age of humanity. 
Now, we're coming to the present we were given to know unity with all that is. Humans were given a gift with which to connect consciously with this endless unfolding miracle, life. It's actually called the present. When we, we can open the present by becoming present, fully engaged in the present moment, 100% involved in the life inside us. No past, no future. Out of the thinking mind, inside the beating heart, inside the breath of life, now. Becoming present is the key to enter the dimension of love. We all have this key. The present moment, the breath we are breathing right now, the current heartbeat now, nothing else, only life happening. Right now continues. The, the past doesn't exist, it finished. The future is not here, now. It's now all the time. Away from any thought, from head to heart, the mind silenced and calm. There are many ways to be in the present moment and connect to the divine presence within. They include yoga, meditation, prayer, many, many more. Everybody can even improvise their own ways. Everybody has their own key to just make their own new way of how to be present. <coughs> Love in action. If you want to change the world, start from yourself. If everyone changes their self, the world can change in one day. Vision. A goodwill movement resulting to unity consciousness. Mission. Tune in to the heart and let it guide us. Let love flow and affect the world. Loving. Coming from the love state of being. Action. Acting, performing, expressing. Spheres of loving action. One, celebration. Celebrating the fact that we are alive. This includes smiling, laughing, <laughs> free hugs, Three hugs, love bombs, helping random people in random situations, caring for each other, meditating alone or together, <laughs> dancing, hugging, kissing, sunbathing, whirling, playing, being polite for no reason, being friendly and loving to other people in the streets, being nice in the traffic to other drivers, celebrating our being alive and letting it show. Because the truth is, we only see the other example. We see outside the fear example. We see angry people, we see negative people, we see people that especially in the traffic. No, to be the other example, to be the example that you're so happy you're alive and you dare to allow it to show. It's okay if they think you're crazy, to dare, to allow your heart to express, it's okay. The second sphere of loving action is circulation. We receive in order to share. So, circulation, there is enough in this world for everyone's needs. We can help the goods circulate in order to reach those that need them and lift the burden off from those that do not need them anymore. There's many people that have so much that it's really a burden. It's a present to them to really lift the burden off, to circulate them to somebody else. There is enough. Giving away or exchanging goods and services. We can do this with the people we know and expand it to those we don't know. And we can do fun things. We can organize fun activities like free bazaars in the streets. It's illegal to sell thing in, things in the streets without license, but there is no law to give things away in the street. 
as long as you don't leave any garbage. And actually, it's very fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people are like, are you for real? Why, how much is it? No, it's for free. And then you put the children there and they so into it to be the shopkeepers of the free shop. <laughs> yeah. uh, you can create or join networks of exchange and start getting used to this mode of circulation. Go outside of the ego. Be, be okay to be, to be like, you know, I want to give you that or you know I need that. Do you have it? To, to break the boundary of, of keeping up a face that I don't need anything. You know I need this. Do you have it? Circulate it. Structure of loving action. Informal and free. Informal. <laughs> loving action comes from the inner world to the outer world. It's a concept. If we attempt any existing structure with a president or a committee, such as a foundation or a company, we will be in the hands of the old, trying to bring forth the new. So it's a concept, freely creating, expressing, and improvising itself. Improvising itself. <laughs> it's a state of being from the inside to the outside. Everybody is loving action. So it's no formal legal existence. It doesn't exist. It's, it's not. But then again, it is, and it's grounding love in the streets. It doesn't exist and is on the streets existing and grounding its heart on the streets. For loving action, love is the law. It is love abiding. It invites every heart and all together as one. Every separate little body and our gigantic united body of humanity. Each responsible for emanating the frequency of love. Group information. Okay, even one person, as scientist Bruce Lipton above explained, is a group of trillions of cells. So even one person is a big group. <laughs> <laughs> we can take our own initiative for solo or small group actions, and we can also arrange large, large activities together. It's up to us to adopt loving action as a life stance. Working tools, very important. Imagination, creativity, innocence, goodwill, fun, laughter, responsibility. Allies, nature, even in the middle of the worst negative situation, just looking at the tree really can ground you back in the love dimension. Nature is the biggest ally. Children are really always there, super generous with this frequency, except when they're like us and they're not. Um, loving people. Our greatest ally is nature. Trees are always in the state of love. They're the most selfless beings on the planet. Uh, and they are emitting that frequency all the time. That's why we do the, the tree hugs. We're, we're really connecting with that. They're healing us just to hug them. They're most, the most unconditional beings on the planet. The, the tree doesn't ask you if you're worth the fruit. It gives so it may live. It will not ask you, you know, are you worth my tangerine? No, it just gives a tangerine. It will not ask, it's unconditional. Um, okay, even a walk with children or loving people is a loving actual activity when being in and sharing that frequency. Uh, we never act with negativity, but we can be as creative and funny and humorous as we like and express freely without ever being destructive. Love in Action was born in a workshop we were doing about a very similar thing into, about how to move from intuition in Germany. And um, a participant said, but what is this all for? You know, what is love? I mean, it's the most passive thing. It's about turning the other cheek. It's, What's this? It's not worth it. And that's where the idea of loving action was born because I was very offended. I felt like in this world that is so negative to stand up there and represent this, this state of being 
is a very activistic thing. Uh, but actually to be there, out there and express this thing, yes, maybe you will cause very weird reactions. Maybe you will be laughed at. Maybe you will be cause very different reactions. Uh, react as you like. If you want, if, if, you, if, if somebody makes fun of you and you feel like you have to do something, maybe jump up and down, maybe do break dancing, <laughs> maybe make a fool of yourself, maybe just dance around them if you like. But be creative. Don't be destructive. Because then it's fear, it's not love. Um, okay, and the more we stay tuned in to that frequency of love inside us, in a very miraculous way, and that's, I'm, I'm saying it from experience, uh, it becomes a solidified reality outside. It's very strange. I tried it in the traffic, being super polite with other drivers. Like, I'm not in a hurry. Yes, please pass my friend, it's great. Sometimes my kids were even making fun of me. Are you going out to go like this to them also? You know, what is this? And in a very weird way, now drivers are also polite to me. I don't know how it's happening. But it works. Um, next steps, tune into your heart. Remember your inner child. Enjoy your every now and dare to show it. Dare to show it. There are many organizations working for this thing. Check them out, find them. And also in Facebook group to join and to use is of course a morning talks that created this and we will be from Love in Action going into this for, to update from, this, from the people here. We can talk through that. But also we have the group in um, Love in Action and uh, free exchange of goods and, every, uh, and services. So if you like, join them and really use them because they're there for, the, for this reason. Thank you very, very much for being here. Thank <laughs> you.